For a lot of photographers, a 24mm full frame equivalent is a happy place to shoot wide without getting too much distortion. Arguably, it's most usable, most useful for landscapes, architecture sort of stuff, maybe street photography and even environmental portraiture so pretty flexible and if you've been in the micro four thirds world for a while now you might have come across the reputation of the olympus 12 mm f2 well today we're shooting this intro with the lens that was in here which is a budget number the per gear 12 mm f2 all manual and i think it's one that's worth showing you obviously because I've already started showing you as we tend to do although this is not necessarily the usual application for a lens of this nature being manual focus especially makes things a little bit harder and my GX80 not having a mic port anyway as you know I like to show off as much samples and possibilities maybe as possible yeah I think we should take a look at this this and see what we think about it especially given it's anything from 143 to 170 pounds ish is it worth it let's take a look And we get this nice case that you'd have seen before on other per gear lenses. It's got a nice little belt loop clip, simple affair, decent, happy with that, you know. Nice little touch. And there's the lens itself. Snap cap right there and cap on the back to reveal metal mount nice solid metal feeling lens it's roughly 300 grams altogether we've got a nice fairly well dampened not too loose at all manual focus ring click free aperture ring with this groove design that we've seen from Pergear previously. We've got 12 elements in nine groups, 10 diaphragm blades. Of course it's F2 but also goes to F22. Minimum focus distance 20 centimeters. 179 pounds on Amazon at time of recording feels good but we need to put it to some use so let's crack on the lens feels solid it's well built I think it deserves to be tested in some more extreme situations to see how it would fare with real low and real high temperature changes in the dull basically winter of the UK that we're in right now it didn't give me any problems but of course it's not designed to be particularly weather resistant so we'd have to give it a real longevity test to find any major flaws build wise if at all now it is of course easy to shoot with even if you're not just setting it to f8 and infinity the lens it's got a good weight without being too bulky or out of place even on the smaller bodies like this older gx80 of course the panasonic bodies with ibis make the lens extra useful too now i'm gonna go in have a cup of, calm down and in the meantime we'll look at some more samples from a less <laughs> gloomy winter's day
The grooved aperture ring is very easy to use. I prefer clicks to be fair, but it's pretty much the way it is these days with budget lenses out to cater for everybody, you know, the hybrid shooter. And it didn't give me that much hassle in this case. Plus, for those of you that care, there's more room to play at the wider apertures due to the lens design. Now, the manual focus ring gives a roughly 140 degree throw. It feels smooth throughout the range from 0.18 to infinity and infinity seems to be pretty accurate. To be fair I shot a lot at infinity and it all looked very decent in my unedited test shots. Now in practice using focus peaking makes it a lot easier to adjust focus with a lens like this and it's a pretty quick operation. I definitely don't think it's a huge problem and for a lot of you manual shooting is a preferred option so the lens offers a decent experience as far as focusing goes. I found it renders the colours very well, it doesn't have any particularly odd characteristics that low end budget lenses are prone to from time to time. It's also not overly clinical. Now you shouldn't be expecting perfect distortion free images and at times you have to be careful, especially in images with strong vertical lines towards the edges, but for a budget wide angle lens it performs well enough in general use. Chromatic aberration and fringing can be an issue to be honest, but nothing that can't be cleaned up in post, you know, shoot raw if you're looking to iron out any flaws with this one. Now the bucket for what it's worth is okay. It's nothing amazing. It's definitely nothing particularly off-putting either for me, unless you're really critical, but then it's more of a personal thing sometimes maybe. I didn't really find anything that made the out of focus areas from this lens particularly distracting overall. What did impress me initially was the center sharpness. It's excellent wide open and then stopping down to around 5.6 gets you the best results that this lens is offering. It's also not giving any big problems with vignetting. So, you know, overall for image quality, I think they did very well with this one, which is good news for the shooter that doesn't need to spend big. The nearest equivalent that I've used is the Samyang 12mm f2, but that's over £100 more expensive than this lens, which on release on Amazon was shown at 179 and as low as 145 I noticed one time on Pergear's website. Definitely a solid option at this end of the market. Arguably there is that Brighton Star 12mm f2, we'll put it up on the screen. It seems to share a lot of the lens internal design but not quite the same externals and it is a bit more expensive on Amazon right now but we can only talk about what we've tried. I don't know, maybe there's some relation with this lens and one of them is a slight redesign of the other. If you have any solid info let us know in the comments below. There's obviously a market for manual shooters and I'd say this fits in nicely, so much so that I wish I had it for my Fujifilm cameras too. Of course, if manual focus isn't a necessity and you have the money, you might go with the Olympus or even the Panasonic Leica 1.4 lens, but 
that's a whole different video. Let us know how you get on in the comments below. And if there's any budget lenses that you think we should look at, I look forward to your suggestions. Subscribe, stay safe, and I'll see you soon.